You know what? I just speak good things over your life today and goodness and good happenings. Hey, I'm Pastor Ron Carpenter. I want to welcome you to Ron Carpenter Television. I just pray that the grace and the mercy of God would flood you today. And no matter what your situation is, that the presence of God would surround you because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. God is to be enjoyed. God wants to bring pleasure to your life. Not bad things. He wants to bring good things. He is a good God. Maybe some of this teaching uh, that I'm given in this series called Supervision can aid in that because God freed you from the law of sin and the power of sin and the mastery of sin and your subjectness to it so that not you had to obey him, but you had the choice to obey him. Supervision has to do with management, the management of your life, the management of relationships, the management of your time. What will you do with the decisions that come before you? Because the Bible says clearly in Deuteronomy 28, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord this day to do all that I've commanded thee, then all these blessings shall come upon you. But if you do not hearken to the voice of the Lord, well, we have the alternative. You know what that is, and I don't want it either. So how do we bring God's blessings into our life? Life is choice driven. Let's examine it right here as we continue in supervision. Let me tell you something, okay? I'm gonna give you a couple of thoughts. There's a difference between being delivered and being free. Big difference. God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt and out of Pharaoh's hand, but they were far from being free. Because the Bible says you shall know the truth. Jesus delivered you from bondage to sin and death. But when you pray a prayer and get saved, you have been delivered. You're saved, but you're far from free. Because you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Deliverance is immediate. Truth is a journey. Truth is a journey. And knowledge and truth, that you shall know the truth. So there are people that are captive Christians. They have had a born again experience, but they don't know the word of God. And so you have these invisible parameters around your life. Because although you've found deliverance in Jesus, you're frustrated because you know you're not living free. I'm going to break it down in just a minute. Let me tell you something else that's be tough to swallow but let me have time to work it Deli freedom is much harder than bondage because when you're in bondage you're managed when you're free you have to manage yourself and the Bible talked about sin with the imagery of slavery that is a very, very offensive and reprehensible image to us. But the Bible said that sin was an awful taskmaster. And the imagery of slavery is you have no will of your own. So the Bible said before we met Jesus, sin made every decision. Sin was navigating your life and sin was in the driver's seat. And Jesus came and cut the power of sin and he delivered you from it when you accepted him. Okay? But he didn't deliver you from the chains of sin to chain you to himself. So you didn't go from one chain to another chain. He set you free to choose. Now that you have been freed from sin, you get to hear the truth and you get to choose to obey. And if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord to obey these things I've given you today, to observe all that I've commanded you, then all these blessings shall come upon you, Deuteronomy 28.1. But if you do not hearken unto the voice, then you have the alternative, and it's not pretty. So God set you free to choose truth. Father, bless the reading of your word in Jesus' name, and let this be the most powerful meeting yet. And everybody said amen and amen. Romans chapter 7, a little bit of review. Verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal, sold under sin. Now in Romans 5 and 6, Paul has done this amazing dissertation on being saved by grace. 
And Romans 7, preachers don't like to preach out of it. They like to preach out of chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 8 is amazing. Blessed be to God who has given, who always leads us into triumph. And I'm persuaded neither life nor death. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. I mean, it's a, if you can't preach Romans 8, you don't need to be in ministry. But everybody skips seven. And you got a pastor that don't skip pages. I don't skip pages. Okay? Because Romans 7, they've done got saved. But he diagnoses this terrible struggle. And preachers don't like to preach about it. And people don't want to talk about it. But it's very real. Good people who love God struggle. For what I'm doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do that I do not practice. And that that I hate that I do. He said, what I'm doing, I don't even understand it. Now, don't that sound crazy? Have you ever done something and knew it was stupid Why you were doing it? And as soon as you got through, you say, what in the world did I do that for? Have you ever done that? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. For those of you online, this must be for you today because all the people in here glow in the dark, so I'm talking to you today. <laughs> Knew it was dumb while you were doing it, and when you got... Have you ever dated anybody and then gone back later and looked at a picture and went... I got a whole one day of some of Hope's old pictures her mom and daddy had saved and she had some trophies and plaques and she's a pageant girl and I, and I found one of her prom pictures and I looked at the thing and went, baby doll. <laughs> Let me move on. I'm getting stared at from the front row right here. <laughs> if then I do what I will not to do, I agree that the law it is good. But it's no longer I who do it. It's sin. No, there we go. Now he's done got saved. He said, but if I'm still doing things that run contrary to what I really feel in my heart, he said, there's still some sin somewhere. We got to track it down. Where is it at? Let's go find it. Okay, stay with me. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, I know that in me, nothing good dwells. Did you hear that? Nothing. When you put him in charge, nothing good can come out of it. Some of us, we don't need no devil. The devil sits back, crosses his legs in his recliner and says, you got this. My flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform it, the good I don't find. <laughs> For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, I practice. He keeps talking about will, will, will. In other words, he's been saved, and deep down inside, there is an earnest desire that he genuinely wants to serve God. He said, but when it gets to the point of making the decision to do what he feels, he never does. So his want to and his actions are in conflict. And this is all going on on the inside of him. And he's already a Christian. It's quiet enough to hear a bobby pin drop on carpet in this church. Okay? Now, if I do what I will not to do, it's no, here he says it again, but sin dwells in me. I find then a law, listen to this guys, <clears throat> that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. I'm saved and I want to do right thing, but right there beside good, there he is. And all the while God's talking to me, he's talking to me. Right there present, all the time. Can't even go to church without him wanting me to judge somebody. Can't even think a good thought without a bad one coming right behind him. For I delight in the law of God according to my inward man, but I see another law 
in my members and bringing, warring against the law of my mind. So now he's got a body, he's got an inner man, spirit, and he's got a mind. Now we done brought three into the picture. He said, and this guy right here called flesh is bombarding my head 24 hours a day. He is relentless. Warring against my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my, if I named this message, it would be called captive Christians. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. Tell your neighbor on both sides, say, I really believe God gave him this message for you. Yeah, tell him, I really believe. <clears throat> I need heaven on my side. I don't know about you. I can't do this by myself. I can't accomplish this vision by myself. Most people know what they want, and typically they want it now. In this supervision series, Pastor Ron discusses God's plan for only getting what you can manage. By this you resemble your heavenly Father when you bear much fruit and that your fruit remain. And I want that blessing to remain. I'm tired of the blessing that comes and goes. I want the blessing that comes to stay. There's some people out here that they're walking out this door and they're unlocking heaven and all the rest of us can't get mad at them when what God said was going to happen actually happened. Because I got a word today, because I'm ready to see this financial devil broken. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Uh, if I was going to make the whole teaching about body, soul, and spirit, I would bring three people up here because that little simple visual actually makes it easier to grasp. The revelation of spirit, soul, and body I got in my late 20s, and it was probably one of the things that helped me understand my walk with God really maybe more than anything else. I was, I was raised in a, a church background that was extremely rigid. And they, they did their best to rein their flesh in and save it. So they had all types of things and manuals and books and manuals and church manuals and, and bylaws about what you could and could not do to be a part of that church because they were trying their best to control the flesh. Okay? So one of the things they would do is they would not let women wear makeup because that was adorning yourself. All the men had to wear sleeves. They couldn't show none of the skin. I mean, everything, everything had to be. But it was amazing the lengths that they went to because they were the, the flesh is evil and we got to do our best to sanctify it and save it, not understanding that you can't save flesh. All we were is we were a church full of real, real ugly people. <laughs> and our churches didn't grow fast. I remember for years my mom would tell me, son, I can't wait for you to marry one of these nice little church girls. And I would look through that building. <laughs> and, um, and I remember uh, great hearts, great people, great intentions. But the fact is you get saved in dimensions. You are created in the image of God and God does everything in threes. Here again, that's a whole other set of teachings. But God is uh, Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, we are spirit, soul, and body built in his image. We are three, but yet we are one. And, you know, you have outer court, inner court, holy of holies. You have 30, 60, 100-fold return. God, God does everything in threes. There's three patriarchs of the faith. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. I could go on and on and on and on about the threes. And God does everything in threes. And so when you get saved, you also get saved in threes. The Bible says that we have, and if you would just allow me here, just try to keep this separated in your mind. You have a spirit man, you have a soulish man, and you have a body or a flesh. So you have spirit, you have soul right here in the middle, and then you have a body. Now God gave me my spirit man for God consciousness. 
How do you walk in a worship service and you want to raise your hands? It's because you have a God consciousness because God gave you a spirit. How is it that you don't even know somebody but you got that funny feeling? How many of you ever had that, that feeling? And we always do this when we talk about our spirit. But the Bible says that out of your belly shall so flow rivers of living water. Talking about the Holy Spirit. And the word belly there actually means bowels. That out of your bowels. So in other words, the Holy Spirit ain't in your chest. But there is something to that gut feeling. You better obey that gut feeling. There's something to that gut feeling. Okay? So... I have an awareness of God by his spirit. But now come over here to my body. My body, I have an environmental, a world awareness. I know not to touch that stove because I had a body. Holy Ghost didn't say don't touch the stove. The big blister on my finger told me not to touch it again. So I won't ever go touch it again. Do you see? I know that I need to put on sleeves during the day because it's warm. I know I need a jacket at night because it's cool. Okay, God didn't tell me that. My body told me that. And I obeyed what my body told me because it gives me a world consciousness and feeds me information from my surroundings and my environment. But now we got the guy in the middle. He's our soul. He's our mind, will, emotions, intellect, knowledge, experiences. Everything from him resides right there in the soul. So I have God consciousness with my spirit. I have world consciousness with my body. But I have self consciousness with my soul. My conscious is my self image. It is whether or not I feel like I can move out in the area of risk and believe in myself or it's whether or not I cower and just stay in small parameters because I do not believe in myself. Everything, every experience is housed, filed away in a cabinet in your soul. So you have God consciousness, you have world consciousness, and you have self consciousness and it's spirit, soul, and body. The Bible says when you get saved, you are born of water and you are born of the spirit. God washes you with the water and then by your spirit you are made alive unto God. It is an instantaneous event. God frees you from sin. You are delivered. The blood of Jesus washes away your past. He gives you a new life and for the first time you are, you are alive unto God and you feel things you didn't feel. You're hearing things you've never heard. You sense things you've never sensed and all of a sudden there's this crazy desire that comes instantaneously. I want to do the right thing and I want to live for God. That happens in a moment, you are perfected, and it cannot be increased upon. However, I have my mind, my soul. The Bible says don't be conformed to the world anymore. But now that you've been saved in your spirit, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the Bible is your water. And it says you take your mind and wash it with the water of the word. So my spirit had an instantaneous experience of perfection. But my mind is washed on a journey. This, is a, this don't happen immediately. This is your daily walk with God in the word and the transformation in your life didn't come when you prayed a prayer of salvation. Transformation comes when you change your thinking. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Not as a man is in his spirit, so is he. As a man thinketh. So the transformation in my life comes when I take the word of God and put him in my soul. Now, can I just, can I just show you something right quick and give you a little cartoonish illustration? This word, Jesus said, is spirit and it is life. This is spirit. This is made out of spirit. It's not made out of onion skin. It's not made out of leather. It's made out of spirit. So here I am in my soul going to the word of God my spirit has already been perfected. I'm going here and taking chunks of him and putting him in my soul. And when I take chunks of spirit, 
by the word of God and put it in my soul, I began to develop a relationship where I lean more toward what he wants. In other words, there comes a place in your walk with God that doing right should be easier than doing wrong. So in other words, when you got saved, your spirit was born again and it entered a picture and up until that time, your flesh and your soul had been hanging out and doing just fine without your spirit. Now your spirit moves in the apartment and threes a crowd. And not only is the spirit there, but he's aggressive and he said, I've come to break you two up. I'm going to split y'all up because I want to date you now. And flesh and soul have been hanging out by themselves for a long time and doing real good. So spirit is saved. Soul is a journey of being saved and washed by the word of God. The problem is this guy over here. My old church tried their best to save him. Your body is not saved. I got about as many amens as I thought I'd get. <laughs> it's not saved. In fact, your body can do everything right now it could do before you got saved. If you turn your body loose, you can destroy your life, destroy your marriage, destroy your company, destroy your career, and destroy your body before dinner time tonight. And you don't even need help from a devil. All you got to do is turn your flesh loose and let it do whatever it wants to do. Yeah, my, clips, my claps are falling off a cliff right now. Let me see if I can preach this back up. Do you see what I'm talking about? I know this is a tough message. This will, touch your neighbor and say, this will set you free. Flesh is not saved. The Bible says that I don't get a new body till I get to heaven. So in this life, I've got to put up with one that is not aligned with God, but it resists God. It don't want to come in line with what God wants. The Bible says this mortality shall put on immortality. This corruption shall put on incorruption. The body said it's sown in weakness, but it's raised in glory. The Bible says in heaven we put on a glorified body. I have no idea what a glorified body looks like. I hope God's got them hanging on hangers and lets me pick one. I hope I can say I want those arms right there. I want those biceps. I want those abs right there. I want those quads right there. And I want those calves. Hallelujah. I hope God lets me designate my own. I don't know what it's going to look like, but the fact is a glorified body is a body that does not resist what God wants to do in your life. And the Bible says I do not get one till I get to heaven. So as long as I'm in this one, I've got to rein it in, I've got to manage it, and I've got to be so strong in my walk with the Holy Spirit that when my flesh wants to act up, my spirit will stand up and say, flesh, sit down, shut your mouth, sit in the corner. You're not making decisions. You do not drive this train, and you are not the captain of this ship any longer. Somebody shout hallelujah. on my side. I don't know about you. I can't do this by myself. I can't accomplish this vision by myself. Most people know what they want and typically they want it now. In this Super Vision series, Pastor Ron discusses God's plan for only getting what you can manage. By this you resemble your heavenly Father when you bear much fruit and that your fruit remain. And I want that blessing to remain. I'm tired of the blessing that comes and goes. I want the blessing that comes to stay. There's some people out here that they're walking out this door and they're unlocking heaven and all the rest of us can't get mad at them when what God said was going to happen actually happened. 
happens. Because I got a word today, because I'm ready to see this financial devil broken. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. You know what? The right choices bring about the right outcomes. <clears throat> the, the desired outcomes in our life. And I want you to know when God brings decisions into your life, if you know what the Word says about that moment and you can listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, harvest can come to your life that are plentiful and pleasurable. God bless you as you hear this Word. You know what? Now's the time where we close. We just want to continue to exhort you and your support for this ministry. Yes, we are viewer supported. We are listener supported. And we've had a host of people since 1998 who have helped us grow to the place we are now. But uh, there's still so many people. They've never heard the name Jesus and there's still so many people. They certainly have never heard of the kingdom that he wants to bring into their life, into their home, into the earth. His kingdom come as will be done. We're here to endeavor to take that message. We have assembled a team. We have assembled technology. We have assembled TV time. And you know what? All we need is for you to believe in what we do and believe in this message that we're preaching. Would you consider supporting on a monthly basis and becoming a covenant partner? Would you consider, if not that, a one-time gift? For those of you who've been giving, thank you so much. Continue helping us as we want to translate this into many languages so people can hear it in their known tongue. For those of you that have never given, I want to encourage you, if this has been a blessing to you, would you turn around and consider blessing the thing that has blessed you? So whether or not it's monthly or one time, we have this gift that we want to send you just to say thank you, just to let you know we place value on you and the fact that you would choose us and partner with us and help us do what we do. We love you. We want God's blessings to be upon your life, and we want to make a difference by the thing that you hear. The Bible is the seed for territory, and we believe every time you hear the Word of God, you can take new territory. I need you to get that Twitter. I need you to get that Instagram. I need you to get that Facebook. I need you to go follow. I need you to send that friend request. Why? Because I want to be able to connect with you a whole lot more than just across TV. So if you want to know about any of these products, they're always, we have the whole package, the whole series for sale. Check out our online bookstore. Everything we've got is in there. And if you'd like my lifetime library, then you can have a subscription to The Vault. We've got a lot that we're trying to make available to aid you in your walk with God. Thank you so much for giving me this time. I can't wait till the next time. May God bless you. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.